I'm finding the time <laughs> to do as much things for as many people as want me to do because I'm, yeah. I want to do everything I can for all the comic, uh, all the duck fans, and there's just physically not enough time. I want to thank you for this great uh, thing that you, uh, yesterday you weren't able to do all the signings you like to do, and now today, I never am, yeah. now today you, you said, okay, hey, quick my spare time, I do more time signing. That's a very very fine thing to us readers. Thank you. Well, they had me scheduled for an hour and a half, and this trip I've gotten used to doing seven hour signings non stop, mm -hmm. so I figured an hour and a half is not enough. I, and the, the maximum that they I could fit in there was uh, what did I do it for? Two and a half, three hours, I mm -hmm. think. It was nearly yeah. three from when, because I was start, I started back here signing before uh, I even sat down. I wanted to start at 10. But it's, you know, everybody, the people want this and somebody wants that, and I want to do that, and it's just, uh, I can't get as it's many things for as many, everybody wants something and they deserve it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying it's people who want something, they don't, everybody deserves what they want, so. But it's great that you have such a great understanding for your ears, that's very fine, thank you. I, well, I figure it's uh, maybe because I don't come into this from somebody who always planned to be a professional cartoonist. Maybe they think, uh, they always thought about, uh, oh, that would be a nice life to uh, work when you want to and be self-employed and, uh, and then, uh, make lots of money maybe and so on. And so to them it's a business. I thought I was going to run the family construction company my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I was always a comics fan. So I kind of stumbled into this like by accident. It was never my plan. I just It just happened. And I still think of myself as a comics fan who somebody has uh, mistakenly let draw published comics. So I, my main interest is the other comics fans. I mm -hmm. never get used to the fact that other comics fans want my autograph. They don't want to just take my hand. So the, when I do it for, uh, like I say, this trip, I've done like several, about four, seven hour non-stop signings. And they say, don't you get tired? And the people that are helping me, I wear them out. They have to, they have to go <laughs> take a rest. And they say, just stop and have something neat. And I said, I can't stop. The people in line can't stop. So, uh, but I never get tired. I never get physically tired. I get really stupid because the, the adrenaline that I think is, is fueling me seems to work on my muscles, but it doesn't work on my brain. <laughs> and uh, so I hope I. Uh, so even now I'm, I'm kind of dazed, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. Another secret is to never slow down. Mm -hmm. and people say, take a break. And I say, no, if I take a break, I'll get tired. Yeah. So I just have to keep going full force. Uh, I just wish my brain could keep up with me because uh, you notice uh, when people want a book dedicated, they have to write their name down in front of me, even if it's Bob. I want to see it, and I don't have to think. I just look and copy it. But after about six hours, if it's if it's Bob and it's written down, I'll get the B O B O. No, yeah, O. And so my brain gets real slow, but I never, I never get tired of. Of course, it's an easy name. It's <laughs> seven letters. Okay, we, we, we are prepared. Thanks to him for, for a real um, professional interview. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, was, was that, that was part of the interview too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, right. sure. Uh, this Just is a uh, comic forum. It's the greatest uh, forum in Germany for. For comic fans, comic fans. Yeah. And we started the thread. What do you like to know from Don Rosa? There no. are some. Oh, and you've got people well, sent in their questions. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of pages, but we picked out some. You picked your favorites. Them, All right. Some of them, yeah. And maybe some of them I can't answer. Maybe they're not allowed to know that. So <laughs> move on to the next one. Well, one of them is uh, if you could imagine to write a story for another one who then uh, draws it. Your job as author. I could conceive of it, I guess, but uh, when I was growing up, I just, uh, in reading comics, and then doing my own comics, just for myself, you know, when I was six, seven, oh, I don't know, up to 14, 15 years old, I just assumed that the cartoonists both wrote and drew the story. I just took that for granted, and that's the only way it seems like it should be done to me. And it seems to me, and I'm, I'm sure people who only write comics are people who only draw comics, 
not a single one of them will agree with this, naturally, but the, the, the comics that are written and drawn by one person, whether it's Jeff Smith, or Will Eisner, or Hal Foster, or Carl Barks, there's a certain spark of magic in that to me. Whether it doesn't mean they're better than the other comics necessarily. I think it does most of the time, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're they're better. But there's some magic in there that you're getting the vision of one person and that the person who drew it knows exactly what the person who wrote it is thinking and he's he's showing precisely what was on that person's mind because it's the same guy. Uh, so uh, of course, that even means Asterix is not quite up to that level. But, and I love Asterix, but uh, I, that's just something. So I, if I if I had my arm amputated, I guess I'd have to write for somebody else. But uh, that's just, uh, given the choice, I'd just as soon quit than do it that way. Yeah, there. In the Hall of Fame, what's that was really. Oh yes. What was it? Yeah. Did you yeah the, uh, oh, no. See the stars. Still, my hand was crushed. I was trying to save somebody's life. Uh huh. Did you succeed? Uh, no, he wasn't in any danger. Anyway. Okay. I just I thought there was this big log going to fall on him. He was driving. It's a long story. Uh, he was a neighbor. We were clearing up some debris in the yard. I live way out in the country, you know, mm -hmm. like 10 hectares. And my neighbor, who had even more land, he had a he was a rich guy. He had a bulldozer, a high lift bucket they call it, and he had this. Uh, wooden beam on there that must have been mm -hmm. this big around and about 10 feet long and it was on the bucket it was on the arms of the bucket this is the story that worth telling but it takes a long time to explain the bucket was here and he had, yeah. the, he had the beam there and he was dumping the stuff in the bucket then we were going to take the beam off so he raised the bucket up and he was dumping into a dumpster and I looked up and I saw this thing rolling back it was going to land right on his head I thought and my first reaction is to I don't know like a Clark Kent I just I didn't know what else to do. I just had to save it. And I reached out, and it missed him, but it landed on my hand on the top of his metal uh, bulldozer. Mm -hmm. So it was like somebody taking a sledgehammer and just boom, wah. So uh, I remember the same day I went back and uh, I made sure that I could still I could still draw, like I could still move my fingers. Mm -hmm. And then his insurance company came over and said, uh, you know, we'd, uh, are you sure you're all right? And I said, yeah. And uh, so they, they, were, they did everything they could. Are you absolutely sure? And I said, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I signed, signed the farm. And then just the moment I signed that farm, something went wrong with my hand. Oh, man. Well, I, I, uh, I couldn't make a fist anymore. Uh -huh. Apparently, the bones weren't broken, but they were crushed. Uh -huh. So uh, after, a, I don't know, a few months, I had to have an operation where they, it was the, the, the broken blood vessels and the everything would just fused together, so they cut slits mm -hmm. and gouged all that out, and what you saw there, because it's just a big lump, yeah. they made me make a fist mm -hmm. and then put a cast all around that, so I had for like a couple weeks in a fist, and so as a result, I got back. It was the left fist? No, it was my right, it was right hand. All right. It was my Sorry. right hand. It, it was, if it was the left, it would be the communist sign. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. But anyway, see, it's still not right. No, it's, it's curved, but that's better than not, you know, I couldn't yeah. hold a hammer, but this, the worst that happens is a fly, you know, lands there, and I go, and he just flies away, because <laughs> I can't flatten my hand. Okay. That could be so more. So that explains that with, uh, oh, okay. took much too long. Oh, really? Very fine, thank well, you. <laughs> okay, another question was, did you ever have interest in drawing Mickey Mouse? Standard question, no shaking head, okay? No, I just, I mean, I, I'm only interested in characters that I find interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, uh, if Carl Barks, they, the people say, why don't you, would you please draw Mickey Mouse? There's nothing wrong with Mickey Mouse. And I said, no, I, you have, you hire Carl Barks to draw, write to draw Mickey Mouse for 25 years and get me interested in Mickey Mouse, and I'll be glad to do Mickey Mouse. I just don't have any interest, you know? And, and the people, whoever's watching this, know they know that I don't have to explain the difference between Donald Duck and Mickey. I'm in Europe. In America, I'd have to explain the difference. But in Europe, they know the difference between Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse. They know one is uh, an interesting character, and the other is uh, you know, a... <laughs> so. Social question of mine. Do you know Phantomius? Uh, yeah. yeah. I know 
I, I've seen would the you, Italian come. Would you like to draw a uh, story with him? Uh, well, I, it's possible. He, you know, there's two universes that don't about. There's the Italian one and then yes. the one that's shared by America and the rest of Europe. And Benfamous, uh, is that his name? No. Pantunas. Yeah. Um, he's lots of different names. He only appears in the Italian stories. Uh, and from what I gather, the original version from the 60s, he was like uh, Dayo Balik. He was like a, not a, a little bit. He wasn't a superhero. He didn't have superpowers. He had powers that I think the Gyro Girlus created mm -hmm. machines. Yeah. So this is like a 19. This is like one of the characters from the cult fiction of the 1920s. It's mm -hmm. like a, so that's not like an American superhero, which. American superheroes from like the 70s on, I don't care for. Uh, so I, I would like to do a 1960s style Paparini. That, that's his original name in, yep. in Italy. But I, I, I think they have a new version of him. Uh, PK, yep. is that the name? I don't think I'd want to do that. That's too much it's like a Marvel comic. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like a Marvel comic. It's, it's, it's a bit like Batman, but uh, more fun. Yeah. yeah. When we're in Italy, yes, we're in Italy. You have uh, Italian ancestry. Oh, yeah. I understand. You speak Italian. No, uh, I mean my father. Italian. My father came from that. No, <laughs> <laughs> my father came from Italy, but he never. Uh, he, he was very young, so I don't even know if he learned uh, Italian as his very first language. They probably taught him to speak English first and Italian second, and he never figured I'd have any reason to, to know Italian. So. Uh, and by the time he was 60 years old, he may not. I think he could understand it, but he, you know, he couldn't speak it very fluently. So no, I, he never thought. He never knew I'd have any uh, uh, use for Italian. Now I could learn it now, but but I visit so many different countries. Uh, I think I just confuse myself if I. We were told you were into <coughs> Italian food. It was yesterday a nice evening? Yeah, I'm <laughs> not into Italian food more than any other kind of food. I just love all kinds of food. I just they can't imagine how tickled I am. I'm, I'm here, you know, uh, so just a few minutes ago, right before you came in, I was having a sausage and sauerkraut and potato salad. Yep. And they said, you like that? I said, well, yeah, I'm in Germany having sauerkraut <laughs> and German potato salad in a meter. So. Wasn't that your beer too? Yeah, where'd my beer go? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in Germany having, no, that, that beer wasn't so good. That was Bex. We can get that in America. So that's a bottle. Yeah. But I've had some beer. Driving through small towns, stopping at a monastery brewery. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I knew the name of the town that we were in and had the best tasting glass of beer I've ever had. You can't get beer in America. Americans drink something they call beer, but I mean, it's like yeah, piss. Drinking comes as like called wine food. Yeah. Yeah. Wine. <laughs> you sold your company to be able to draw. No? I liquidated it. Liquidated, which means okay. that means I got it a, sound such no, a it's, I didn't get anything. You know, okay. A couple of thousand dollars, and I think wrote off a tax loss on the stock certificates, and uh, yeah, it's a construction company. You can't very well sell a construction company. You know, all your workmen just go to work for somebody else. And, uh -huh. Did you so. ever regret? Oh no. <laughs> No, I mean, it wasn't long after that that uh, Disney told, uh, you know, that's when, that's when I was still working for Gladstone, the little tiny American publisher, it's like a three-guy company, yeah. told them not to return my art anymore. Because I had it figured out with uh, what Gladstone paid, which was very little, that's all they could afford, you know, the Disney comics don't sell in America, and they sold then even better than they sell now in America, that was mm -hmm. just nearly 20 years ago. Uh, with what little they paid me per page, with what I could sell the artwork to uh, for the collectors for, mm -hmm. I'd make about two thirds of what mm -hmm. I used to make with a construction company, but it would be something worth doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a construction company, I was the boss by the you know by the time uh, it was easy. Some days I just sit there and read a book, wait for somebody to call and you know figure a job or find out a. Uh, but at the end of the year, you know, we put it. We did ceramic tile and terrazza and. Uh, at the end of the year, all I'd have was money. But doing a comic book at the end of the year, I've got those three or four stories that I did, and they'll exist forever. And, <laughs> and I found that later, even they'll be reprinted. Maybe. And, and, and more than that, printed in Europe, which I never dreamt about. And that's, um, that seemed like more important. So, uh, so that's why I liquidated the company. 
I think after, I, I was uh, working part time on comics and then part time at the company, and my uh, my partner, who was my who wasn't a Rosa, uh, he was my uncle's stepson. So mm-hmm. my uncle was a Rosa, but uh, this his, this was his stepson, so he wasn't a Rosa, and. My name was Kino Rosa like my grandfather's. I was the only male grandchild, so my name was the same as the company, the Kino Rosa Company. And my partner finally said after I'd done this for about six months, he said, you know, if you're not interested in the company and it's in your name, then why don't we just liquidate it? And he'll go mm-hmm. uh, uh, get a, become a partner with another guy and then I can do comics full time. And I said, sure, I, I probably would have been too cowardly to decide that on my own. But he suggested, and I said, sure. Now, I, I was married to a teacher. So mm-hmm. I knew she had a solid job and was making more money than I was making doing comics, and I knew I wouldn't starve. But it was after that that uh, Disney told Gladstone not to return the art. And that, so there was a year there where I, uh, things were really rough yeah. because I didn't have a, my company was gone. And like I say, if, once you've been the boss, nobody's going to hire you to work for them. So. I just sputtered around and, uh, until I had the uh, the idea in desperation to write. Because in the meantime, I'd found out what an American would never dream that there's something going on in Europe different than America. Mm-hmm. In America, well, who would have ever thought of that? Uh, I had no idea that Disney comics were still as big in Europe as they had been in America back in the 50s and 60s. So I, I sent a telegram, which was the only I couldn't afford to phone call. So this is about 1980. Oh no, 1990. I sent a telegram. I don't even guess they have telegrams anymore, right? You got email. Why, why do you yeah. need telegrams? They must they be are, out of business. Okay. You can use them, uh, for example, to, to send a telegram to, to uh, birthday. Mm-hmm. birthday or something else. Oh, it's something, something it's a, a novelty. Today. It's a yeah. novelty. Yeah. Yeah. A singing telegram. <laughs> anyway, I sent, <laughs> yeah. 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 I sent a telegram to Egmont. I found out they're this big publisher. I said, could you possibly use one more person? I, I knew my artwork wasn't any good compared to the, the real professional artist. But, and uh, and then I got a phone call from Europe, supposedly. And they said, uh, yeah, sure. They, uh, I could work for them. And they wanted to know how much I needed to be paid. And I asked for the same amount the Gladstone was paying. This little bitty bit. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know who I was really talking to. And I hung up. And per- partly I was just suspicious this was a practical joke because it seemed kind of this is too good to be true. And then I said, well, if it's not a practical joke, why did I ask for that same tiny amount? I should at least ask for a, what I'd been led to understand was a medium price. Mm-hmm. So I sent another, another telegram and asked for, a, said, could I please increase that just a <laughs> little bit? And I got another phone call, you know, four or five days later. And the person on the phone apparently knew what was in the telegram. So this was real. So I and they said, no, those, both those amounts were out of line, and they wanted to pay me this much, mm-hmm. which was more than I'd been asking. So they apparently were afraid I was just going to ask too much. Uh, and I went to work for them, just assuming I'd just be one of dozens and dozens or maybe hundreds of other people, and I, I, that's something I wanted to do. I never expected my stuff was going to be this popular, because it looks bad to me. I mean, it's, it's filled with needless and irritating detail, and it's... Uh, it's, it looks more like Robert Crumb drawing duck comics. Uh, uh, to, to me, uh, it came like uh, you have uh, Jack Kirby of Disney. <laughs> you're, you're a little more, but uh, Disney is round every time, and you have something a little bit. Well, I've for, for 20 years I've been trying to figure out why my weird-looking, crude, fan-looking artwork is so popular, and uh, well, partly maybe there it's, it stands out. You know, the other stuff is all cute and cuddly, and mine is yeah. kind of got an edge to it. Because that's a, that's as good as I can draw. But I also figure that uh, I think people are looking at it, and they know I don't get paid extra for all that detail and all the, those complex plots and all the background stories that are going on. Um, and they figure uh, for somebody to put so much effort into such bad art, they must really be enjoying themselves. <laughs> and so the readers enjoy yeah. When I'm enjoying feel, myself. You can feel that you're doing uh, your job. Uh, I'm doing it for fun job. because I want to entertain the yeah. other fans as much as I can and pack as much into each little panel as I can to, for just to give everybody as good a time as possible. On this uh, point, I wanted to ask you, Paul Barks had sometimes uh, a political statement in his comments. Barks, they you say? Yes. They weren't just fun. They had yeah. fun with an attitude. 
you for me even more fun. Yeah. I especially started to read Donald Duck with your uh, version of Donald Duck. Uh, yeah. um, as I was young, I didn't understand this political meaning of the Karbak stories. And uh, so I started with your fun, especially with the ones in the background. Yeah. Yes, I, I liked it very much. And then I was told, well, you have to read Karbak maybe again because there's another way to approach Karbak. Do you like to be only funny or did I miss your statements when you do them? Do you see political statements in my stories? No, I don't. No. There no. aren't any. Yes. Because I'm just trying to entertain people. Okay. Uh, and I don't think it's art. I've seen comics that are art. My comics aren't art. They're just oh, hopefully no. good entertainment. I'm and just trying to entertain. Very fine entertainment. If I was trying to do art, I'd take out most of that detail. And then it okay. might be art. If good entertainment is art, yeah. yes. I, I tend to, I choose to believe that like old Alfred Hitchcock movies and John Ford movies are art because they're fun and clever and so on. But um, but it's not that I'm not political, but I just the comics aren't the place for that, I guess. Okay. And I mean in the last four, five, six years, I wish I could do some political stuff in there. You wish you could do? Well, anything against Bush. I okay, mean, okay, okay. Anything, because I know I've got European readers. Well, most of them are. Just convey to the world, if they suspect that the American people like George Bush, I just, I wish I could tell them that's not the case. Mm -hmm. It's like 60, 75% of America is just as appalled by this moron as the rest of the world. But there's nothing we can do about it right now. Okay. Maybe you could do this uh, with comic books that have characters that are, that are your own. Did you ever think oh. about that? Well, everybody keeps, when I'm when I'm moaning about how the, the, this whole system is so unfair that I've got to waste so much time <coughs> chasing down these publishers in uh, South America or uh, Eastern Europe that are using the same way uh, Egmont does the Don Rosa libraries and the Don Rosa calendars and the Don Rosa. Finally, Egmont has agreed to pay me you know, some annual amount because they agree that they can't use my name in photo because I don't get any royalties. I assume people know that. I don't make any money off the sales and anything I do. But so you have to keep on drawing comics? Uh, like for us. Excuse me? I, you don't get paid that, that your oh name no, is used, so, so you have to get to well, yeah, pay for I, your comics. That's uh, bad for us readers. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, and I don't really need to make lots of money. I just. You know, after 20 years, it, I, I get the feeling uh, really stupid that some of these corporations are making such a chump out of me. Because some of them know that I'm a fan, and they I think they figure that, oh, we can do anything to him. He's never going to quit, because he loves it. He loves all that. And to, up to a point, that's true. <coughs> But as of about four years ago, I decided that it's not true. I'm, it's just too unfair. And uh, But I've got no complaints with Eggmont right now. That's the main company that I work directly for. They're, they're doing... You know, they're treating me extremely well, uh, but I still have to watch all these other uh, publishers. Uh, I forget where I was going with this. You asked me if uh, I want to do my own characters. Oh, well, the pe yeah, okay. The people say you're so unhappy with the, the and as you should be, with the way these publishers, uh, why don't you do your own character? And I say, <coughs> uh, any character that I might create next week, I didn't grow up with. Mm -hmm. I don't have an attachment to him like I do. It wouldn't be from your heart. Yeah, because uh, it would just be fate. Uh, I mean, I was, uh, and again, this uh, I should jump back and explain how, like you might have read someplace, that uh, I was looking at these comics literally from birth, because I had a sister who was 11 years older than I, I was, and she had the house filled with Karl Barks comics. So from the moment I was born, I was looking at Donald Duck, and that, he's as alive to me as my parents were. So that is really sensational feeling that I can work with this character that is just like ex existing from moment to moment in my head. I couldn't do that with my own character. And there's no reason in the world why these publishers can't treat people like they are making plenty of money. They've just gotten, over 70 years, they've gotten used to never having to pay Disney comic creators royalties or anything. They just, they just use them. But there's no reason that they make plenty of money. They make more money than the publishers who do pay the creators a fair royalty. Mm -hmm. So I just am hard-headed. I just I'm going to stick with it with Eggnut. I, 
there's no reason that I can't do what I want to do and do as hopefully as nice a job as people tell me I'm doing with these characters and for the company I'm working for to treat me well. And I think they are now, but I still, like I say, there's still uh, all the non-Eggmont companies that are using my work still without without any permission. And it costs me, uh, well, the the small, well, the, the modest annual fee that I get from Egmont, I spend half of it hiring lawyers to go after, because that's part of my obligation. If, if one company pays me for rights, then I've got to take some of that money or all of that money if need be and stop other companies from you from doing what I'm allowing this company to do for a fee otherwise I'm not fulfilling my end of the agreement so, so it's, and, and it's all made my life so incredibly complicated that, uh, and that's what's wearing me down now I've just created this incredibly complicated life for myself I can't it's not like not like my buddy Jeff Smith he's pretty owns his own character, so he makes all the money he deserves. He hires me, you know, he's got assistants. I, I don't make enough money for even one person, so uh, I have to do everything myself. I have to answer all the email myself, and, uh, and as a fan, I answer every single piece of fan mail I get, no matter how long it takes. And, uh, well, I know we're probably running out of time, so yes. that's the next thing. I always give answers that are way too long. Did you need no, to that's something? A... What? I have to do something before I sign? Do I have five minutes? A little bit for last question? Last question. Last question? Alright. So, one question we have to ask yeah. would be uh, decapitated we don't. Would there be another installment of this um, uh, Scrooge, his life? And life? His uh, the life and times of Scrooge yes. McDuck in yes. English. Would there be uh, another I don't know. I'm, I'm, of course, I'm debating now whether I'll do any more stories at all. I want to. But it depends on what the publishers. If I, if I keep having the trouble with these other publishers. You, you uh, I'm doing some out. posters right now, so it's not like I'm not doing it. I'm doing a series of 12 posters. I don't know if you heard me mention right. so And that takes some, quite a bit of time. So, but after that, but as to whether <coughs> I do any more Life of Scrooge, I love doing those so much that I kept doing them after I did the first 12. Uh, and my favorite ones were always the Klondike story that involved Littering Goldie. And the last one I did, which is in the, this new book, was like... The one that I'd been kind of leading up to from the very beginning, and now I don't feel like uh, I don't feel an urge to do any more Life of Scrooge stories. I've done the greatest moment of his life, and to do anything else is uh, kind of anticlimactic. Some readers might have thought, you know, the thirteenth chapter was anticlimactic after the first twelve. So I may not do another uh, Life of Scrooge. What what would be the theme about the, the next one? Did you figure it out already? No. Do you have some? Not the slightest idea. Oh, okay. Because I, I don't think about them until it's time to sit down and force myself to do it. Thank you for your time. <laughs> sure. And uh, thank you for your time for okay. your fans. Yeah, and I'm sorry to keep you guys waiting. But, uh, so. No problem. Uh, for you, uh, it was worth every minute of waiting. Thank you. <laughs>